Cold War, large Russian trawler fleets operated in the North Sea, and a key concern was how Norway would defend its shores if these vessels were to be loaded up with special forces. They had hundreds of trawlers up in the north, and if they loaded them, hide infantry on board them, and they took the course against Norway, they could occupy northern Norway in a week. The newly acquired F-5 Freedom Fighters had the firepower they needed, but they lacked the right ammunition for this threat. They started, of course, to look at the American ammunition that was training ammunition, armor-piercing ammunition, high-explosive ammunition. But they found that this ammunition did not wear with these boats with very thick armored plates. The American ammunition was largely ineffective against the trawlers. The high explosive exploded immediately upon impact, while the armor piercing was able to penetrate the hull but not cause any further damage. That was really the start of thinking. We need something more than what was available from the US. It was clear that Norway needed to develop its own ammunition, and a small group of NAMO Ralfos engineers and scientists from the Norwegian Defense Research Establishment, FFI, took on the challenge. They used thick steel plates to simulate the trawler hulls. We found out that the training ammunition was penetrating this, and it was exactly what it should do. We could also feel it with incendiary, so it was an armor-piercing incendiary ammunition. And that works very well. They continued to develop the training ammunition until one day when test firing on an old Sabre plane for the Norwegian Army something quite remarkable happened. We discovered that it was hitting the wings. The pressure exploded inside it. And that was an invention, because it shouldn't do that. It couldn't work in that way, but it works. And we didn't understand what happened. But the army was very excited and ordered us to start production. The new ammunition was a great success in Norway but its long-term success depended on finding international markets. Out of the blue, in 1976, a U.S. Navy officer called Paul Miller appeared at the Ralfos reception. He wanted to know how to demilitarize the multipurpose. They had a director. He had decided that they should send uh, 1,000 rounds to America for testing but without talking with me, you just said them. And of course, there was no program, no plan. So they said 1,000 round, they traveled around in the United States for a year. They started to discuss, couldn't you just fire them instead, look at how it works, because they could demonstrate this up to over firing range. He was, was very interested in uh, getting this operational in the United States. So I was invited over. They started to fire against an aircraft, and, and so they fired one round with murder weapons. And the aircraft exploded. The multipurpose was very fast adopted by the US military forces that has utilized it to a great extent with big success. And today it's widely used by many of the NATO countries Despite its widespread use, it wasn't until the early 1990s that they discovered exactly how the multipurpose concept worked the way it did. In the 60s, this was really a big surprise. It was something totally new for them, that it was possible to use explosive without uh, these mechanical detonators and safe and mechanisms that was very expensive. This new way of using explosives made the multipurpose well suited against armored targets such as the North Sea trawlers. Instead of a traditional detonator, it has a pyrotechnical ignition train. This causes a delayed explosion known as a deflagration. Unlike the existing ammunition, multipurpose was able to penetrate and explode on the other side. The engineering team from the 60s rewrote the theories on explosives and created a concept that became a success worldwide. But perhaps more importantly, they inspired a new generation of engineers.
they put the foundation down, they set the basis for the uh, development team here at Rofos and it has led to hiring more engineers, building up a bigger development team and going from a team that was focused on mechanics, explosives, chemistry to electronic engineers. So the development team has grown a lot since then. It inspires learning, that's for sure. It inspires me to want to move on with the products, maybe invent a new type or a new version. So I think that has given me the opportunity to want to do better for myself. They had to kind of walk the path that I'm walking on now, but now it's open. Now we're thinking forward. We're thinking, I made that and I can make this also. This has made Namo more willing to explore and to develop more and better ammunition.